hey friends, I thought it would be funny to record a video in front of my curtain, which looks a little bit cooler, I guess. I don't know, something different. Anyway, for my past few videos, I have been making uh, videos in response to qu specific questions that people have asked me in the comments. But for today, I feel like talking about something that's been on my mind for some time now, which is the idea of articulating a vision. And I'm thinking about this not on a, so much the personal level, although the personal level is always tied up in the bigger picture. But just thinking about, about what the future is going to be like and thinking about thinking about the future, for example. Um, I'll bring out a couple of things to talk about. One thing is that uh, I, I witnessed a recent conversation about, you know, kind of the differences between people on the left and people on the right politically and like conservatism and liberalism and whatnot. And I observed that, you know, uh, th th there's a common observation and right? everyone understands that the left is generally more fractured and incoherent and kind of split into many different factions while the right tends to be much more unified and um, you know they have the same i mean i'm almost oversimplifying but they have a few issues that they care about and they, they are able to focus on those things and the reason for that the way i see it is that you know so the right the people on the right they have a shared understanding and you know it's not perfectly shared but it's not a completely coherent but it is more coherent than the left right which is that they have i think broadly a kind of idealized vision of the past like they have they, they take certain principles from the past traditions whatever old, they, they have an idea of how they want life to be like and they have consensus amongst themselves about what that future would look like and it looks like an idealized version of the past on a certain trajectory. Whereas on the other hand, the people on the left have many different competing visions for what the future could look like. Now, I think, you know, an advantage that the left does have over the right, or, you know, the, the I don't really like using the, free, the, the words left and right, but it's like, you know, pe people who are concerned about tradition and, and um, you know, lessons from the past, people who are concerned about order, Versus people who are concerned about, you know, I want to say chaos in a, in a good way, right? Like, like for me, I, I think of myself as a chaotic person. And, you know, there's like a generative chaos, right? There's, there's the, the source of innovation and insight and newness and what is good and interesting. To me, I associate that sort of creative energy with, with chaotic energy. But, you know, it's complex and there's many ways to frame these things, but what I'm getting at is um, the, the thing about the people in the chaotic um, environment, chaotic environment, people in the chaotic camp, right? The chaotic camp is itself a fractured and chaotic camp. You get what I mean? So like the, 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 the team order, team order and tradition is orderly and follows tradition. Whereas Team Chaos is chaotic. It's funny. It's very funny if you think about it. It's very meta. And um, it just, it occurred to me that one of the most valuable things that if, if, if you care about, you know, liberal values and um, try, progress, you know, I, 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 I really don't know what words to choose because I think these things are so late, lo so loaded in other people's minds and I don't usually have to talk about these things because I'm able to express myself through other means, right? I prefer not to look at this. This is one of those things I prefer not to be too direct about. I prefer to approach it obliquely. But yeah, you know, if you care about that sort of thing, if you think that the future needs to be creative and interesting, then I think it's important that and a very important work that needs to be done is we need to articulate a, a clear and compelling vision of what that future could look like. And people aren't doing, in, in my assessment, people aren't doing a great job of it so far, you know. And, uh, you know, it will always be an uphill battle for people on the left, people 
who have different people who are dissatisfied with the status quo are all dissatisfied in different ways right whereas the people who kind of want to return to tradition or whatever it's very easy for them to to pick images and talismans and motifs and riffs and references from things from the past that existed once and you know you could get into some nitty-gritty arguments about how those things never really quite existed and the the idealized vision of it is fictitious as well but you know that fiction comes easy to them and i don't mean fiction as an insult you know i like so what i'm trying to say is that we have to articulate better fictions that we believe in that we care about that we think the future should look like and you know one of my uh uh I put together a lot of my different talking points into a single meme. Uh, I'll, I'll link it, I guess. It's it's a Domino's meme, like where the guy is knocking over one small Domino and it's a bigger Domino and it's a bigger, bigger, bigger Domino. And I added captions to it. And for the, the smallest Domino, I put love and curiosity. For the next Domino, I put friendly, ambitious nerd. For the next Domino, I put something like um, uh, flourishing scenes, or open, open and something scenes and then after that meta scenes of that are nourishing and, and um, you know exploratory and then shift in human consciousness golden age for humanity that's kind of like the, the domino effect and i kind of did it for fun really quickly but it's resonated with people and so i have now made that like almost like a cornerstone tweet that i add threads below and i'm researching golden ages and i'm researching scenes and cultural institutions but you know, um, it's been interesting for me to witness other people's response to it that has been strong. More, I'm not going to say they're like, you know, gushing with, with emotion, but it, there's, there's, they, have, they feel more strongly about it than I expect them to. And because I guess, again, the thing about vision is I've already internalized all this stuff in my head. It's very messy and chaotic, but you know, why am I saying chaotic? It's very messy and, um, you know, it's not clearly defined for public consumption but i have a picture in my head that guides my behavior because i have read a lot and thought a lot and i know what i think the future is going to be for me right which is and i should probably get into that but now i'm seven minutes in and this is all preamble on vision but the point is that um you can you can I guess I'll bring it back to an individual, right? So if, if you have a vision for yourself of what your future is going to look like, then you have something to look forward to. And if you have something to look forward to, you can you can get excited and you can, you know, you, it, it unlocks energy to do things. Like even now I'm making this video, you know, like what's going to happen? Like, like maybe 20 people are going to watch it. Maybe two guys are going to comment. Like, why should I give a shit? It's because I have this broader vision for myself as a guy who's going to be making hundreds of videos and all of these are stepping stones to that that future that I have in mind. That, you know, that one day people will look back and be like, oh my god, that video, he was so rambly and he didn't edit his videos and nobody watched it. Like, whatever, man. It, it's, you know, it's, it's the journey that I care about. And it occurs to me that people are not as good at thinking like that as as me. I've, I've practiced it. It's something I have worked on on my own and I've gotten good at it. And it's kind of ironic that like there's the curse of knowledge right like once you get good at something you forget kind of what it was like to be bad at it and you kind of assume that everyone else is probably decent at it something like that but yeah vision you know it's very and you could you could talk about leadership and um you know what it means to be a leader a founder this thing there's some steve jobs quotes about how you know the leader's job is to articulate a compelling vision that everybody in the team agrees on and then you know you can practice once you get everyone to agree on what an interesting future is you can pretty much trust them to figure out most of what it takes to get there and there's that little prince quote that i'll also put in the comments and yeah i just wanna this is definitely just a part one and i'm gonna i just want to get into this i get thinking about this idea of articulating a vision and sharing it with other people and uh, i guess i will share more of my thoughts on that in tomorrow's video yeah done